Nico here, welcome back to Feed the Beast Direwolf 21.7.10. I've been doing quite a little bit of stuff since you last saw me. I'm going to talk through that in a moment. First, one of the first things I've done is I've got this guy, he's a villager. I um, I looted a couple of chests that had a couple of single net, single use safari nets in, and one of them I grabbed this villager from the village of uh, there, from up there, and he gives me emeralds for 19 coals. Now I've, I've maxed out his trades, I'm going to show you in a minute how you uh, how you get the trades back. But something weird I've noticed is every now and again he drops an emerald on the floor. Now is that is that a thing now? Is that something I'm not just not aware of? Uh, he keeps giving me free emerald down again, which thanks dude, but, uh, I'm not sure if I should be getting free emeralds anyway. Uh, two minutes, that needs a redstone in it. Just made some more regen potions. Because I went into the nether and uh, saw a couple of ghasts. Oh, two minutes. That's already, that's already done, idiot. I've already done that. Right, cool. So, I'll quickly run through what I've done since last episode. One, you'll see me moving really quick. I'm starting to really like Britannia. I have made a bobble. I've made a couple. I've made a ring of magnetization and a sojourner's sash. Now, these are really simple. Hello. I should give them a name, really. These are really simple to make. I, I couldn't believe how easy they were to make. I've, I'll be honest with you, when I first saw Britannia, and this, this is the first time I've played with it, when I saw Britannia, I thought, oh, it's just flowers and stuff, and I didn't really appreciate how big the mod was. Now I'm starting to get into it. I'm starting to feel the Britannia love that everyone I've seen play it seems to have Britannia love, and uh, I'm starting to develop it as well. Come here, you. Oi, stop hiding from me. Thank you. Everyone will seen play, play it as Britannia Love, and I'm starting to get it as well. Now, these things are really straightforward to make. The Ring of Magnetization. So that Man of Steel ingots that we've used. Basic lens, his four of them are on a bit of glass. Then put that with gold and iron. It becomes a magnetizing lens. Oh, white tinted. What's that? The difference with that one. So I made it to a magnetizing lens, and then you put it around four more than Man of Steel. It makes it into a ring. And that just brings things back to you. It's got a really nice effect too that when you throw things down it doesn't pick them back up straight away so if you're trying to throw things down to scan for Thorncraft for example then whoop there we go so things that you break they'll come straight to you but things you throw on the floor throw on the floor they'll um, they'll stay on the floor for a few seconds which is pretty cool I like that. The other thing I made is I can't believe how cheap this is. These are maybe a little bit cheap uh, I was expecting this to be more expensive. Rune of Air and Rune of Earth. So I made some runes in a similar way you saw me make the the other two. The other two elemental runes. So I've made all four elemental runes now. I've made Earth, Wind, Fire and Water. So if you look in our chest there, I've got Water, Fire, Earth and Air. So there's they're the four basic runes. The, the next runes are more expensive because they use these. So your next runes that these go into... So that's going to be that kind of crafting. But right. What's that making? That's making a, a hopper hock. Interesting. Um, okay, these runes don't go into the next ones then. My bad. Oh, was that it? Yes, it was. That was it. Let's find the right thing. There we go. So these runes go into making the next runes, which are the season runes. And then the season runes go into making the next runes. Ah, you're up. So it's three tiers of runes, which are the uh, seven de deadly sins. So, yeah, I, I made this thing. So, Jonah's sash. So, just four bits of leather, one of the mana steel ingots, and two runes gets you this guy. And it's pretty amazing. It gives me double jump. It gives me step up, so I can run up blocks without having to jump up blocks. And as you can see, it makes me pretty quick. So, I'm really happy with that. And uh, really happy with the price of it as well. Very, very cheap. Um, what I've done in Thorncraft is I've done two things. I've made I've made a gold cat's great wood one because I found a great wood tree when I was out over there. And you'll see why I was over there in a bit. If you can read that, you can maybe see where we're going over there. There you go. But uh, great wood tree over there. So I managed to get some great wood logs. Great wood logs, if you put two in here and a bit of money, you should make a great wood one, one staff. And um, then gold nuggets in a little five pattern makes you gold caps, and then you can put that together to make a gold one. So my original one had a 25 capacity and 105 cost. This one has 
a 50 capacity which I've not seen I'm not filled it right off yet as you can see and a 95 cent cost so it makes things cheaper as well so that's pretty cool where I have made a backpack each one of these takes a stack of string so eight string around a stick gets you one of them and you need eight of them so that's a stack of string to make a bag so we should part, part of why I went to automate the string last time the uh, cotton plants should I say so that's that's coming on nicely uh, and this I, I made this thing this is pretty straightforward to make it's called it's in the first tab there the basic tab it's called a deconstruction table it's just a table a thermometer and a, a couple of golden tools and some pedito on your workbench really easy to make and things you don't use so I've got an infinity bow so I don't need arrows so I've thrown the, loot, the arrows I've been looting off skeletons in there and every now and again it gives you a three a, a free aspect and it'll only give you the primal aspects so see it's not guaranteed it's quite a low chance but rather than just throw throw things in the bin you might as well you know and uh, while you're watching it never works come on there we go so it's gonna be terror again so it's just adding more aspects to my table here so I'm getting so just adding me an extra terror there which is quite nice uh, and there we go it's giving me an aqua that time wonderful uh, I found a couple of white crystals so I've made one of them ones but I've not actually made a white crystal yet because I've not got enough white crystals I have got five there we go right and uh, those things mundane belts are looted the sword are looted and I made some stones there but uh, they're really straightforward but I'll talk to them when I, when I actually use them that's all I've done on Thorncraft detail that time there you go now in here what have I done nothing I've got a couple more I've got a couple more plants under at the end but I've not actually put activators underneath them yet so I've got 16 stacks of of berries in there and another Moria so I'm up to nearly 19 stacks of berries so that's coming on nice um, in here now things are just the same things are just the same right what I'm going to do in a minute is carry on I'm going to empower this armor so I've had this armor it's, it's equivalent to iron it, it does seem more than iron but that's probably because of the protection I've got on it as you can see it's got unbreaking um, I added a portion of night vision and 10 levels to the helmet so now it's not night time so you can't tell but if I press P I've got night vision you get that siphon filter sound does anyone remember siphon filter um, you get that proper night vision goggle sound uh, in a minute I've got some stuff ready here we are going to empower this armor so it's going to be fully fully empowered so we'll see what kind of difference that makes um, one thing I have done up here is I was covered in these in micro blocks just because mobs kept jumping on them and breaking them so it just stops mobs jumping on them I made this thing this from, from Britannia as well nice little floating plant um, it's really easy to make as well it's just a glimmering flower which is a flower any colour flower with a couple of glowstone a piece of dirt and this stuff called pasture seeds and pasture seeds are just grass thrown into the mana infusion while I'm still on Britannia, one more thing I did was when I needed leather for the belt, I only had three leather and my cows were taking ages to grow. I'll we'll talk about that in just a minute there. So I made this guy, it's the Alchemy Catalyst. Alchemy Catalyst, there we go. Um, it's a little bit expensive. Mana pearl thrown into the mana pool there, some living rock, some gold, a couple of brewing stands, so a couple of blaze rods, it's not that expensive really. What that does is that increases the amount of things you can throw into the mana pool, so now if I, th I can throw a rotten flesh in there and it turns it into leather, so that's quite nice. Right, I'm going to go show you my light vision. <laughs> um, this is a real nice place for ender endermen, I've been getting endermen just for every night. I just come up here and I look around and I get an enderman just for every night, so I've had loads of ender pearls, which is very cool. Down, I'll have that because I'm a bit low on ink. Um, down under the base, I've been mining at about level 30 that way, and I found a abandoned mine shaft, which is quite nice. So I've been mining that a little bit. And one other thing before we get on with making something is, as you see upstairs, I have started blood magic. Now, because I've got the regen, 
and while we're talking about the region actually you'll see that quite a nice touch I think is let's make this too overpowered see look he's just dropped an emerald on me is that is that a correct thing or is that some broken somehow if anyone knows let me know please if I put this guy down you'll see that as well as having region 3 I've also got hunger 3 so it's a bit of a trade off and I like that it's good so it makes it so that I've got to keep eating food so luckily I, um, I killed quite a few cows over there and I've got loads of steak because of my looting sword so that's uh, okay I've got loads of steak anyway get rid of him so I started blood magic now blood magic as you know if you know me is one of my favourite mods it's a mod I've done quite extensive stuff in I've not done a lot of the new spell stuff but um, I've done a lot of stuff in it and where's the right there's the first one so I'm gonna quickly show you what I've what I've done to get to this point now I just did this off a of camera because it's nice and quick basically I made a blood altar blood altar if I can spell there we go oops where's it gone oh altar okay blood altar is stone a furnace Diamonds and a gold, cool. And then if you, th and this sacrificial knife, really straightforward as well. And each time you stab yourself, it takes a heart of life, and it puts 200 life points into the altar. Yeah. So the first thing you do when you do this is, I'll put let me pant back out on so in case I get jumped. Um, the first thing you do when you do this, there we go. Get me left back up. Why not? And now I'll just eat that because. Got a bit of hunger showing there. First thing you do with blood magic is you throw a diamond in the altar, and that becomes this guy, your weak blood orb. Once you have got a weak blood orb, you right click it and it becomes bound to you. So if you look at that, it looks like it says current owner, Echo the Builder. That's bound to me. That will hold 5,000 life points. The altar itself holds 10,000. The best way to see how much your altar and your orb has got in it is to make this guy, Divination Sigil. And that just uses an altar, some glass, and this thing called a blank slate. And a blank slate is just made really easy by throwing a bit of smooth stone in there. And that takes a couple of hundred life points and it turns it into, maybe take a thousand, maybe take a thousand life points and it turns it into a blank slate. And then the blank slate, glass and your orb, it doesn't use the orb up. So a blank slate in the middle, glass round, it turns it into this guy, divination sigil. What we can do with that, two things. One, if you click it on the altar, it tells you the altar's current essence it's tier and it's capacity so you see that it's tier 2 I'll tell you why it's tier 2 in a minute if you click it in the air it gives you your your orb capacity now that's a tier 1 orb so that only holds 5000 as you can see I upgraded my old set to a tier 2 and you do that by putting 8 of these blood runes around it blood runes are also very simple so a blood rune is just your, your, your orb in the middle 16 these slate you need eight so you need two for each so 16 in total so you need 16,000 life points then some smooth stone make eight of them blood runes put them around you don't have there's not one underneath it there's just eight there so there's just a hole underneath it get them egg, eggs out of the way so there you go eight around there that makes this into a tier two altar which again you can see by looking there that's a tier two now and when it becomes a tier two you can throw an emerald in there and that becomes a tier two orb so that there is my apprentice blood orb tier two orb wonderful and that has a capacity as you can see by clicking in the air with that of 25,000 life points so my system's got 25,000 life points in it what I actually want to make is it's got a spell table so I want to quickly make one of these so I need a blood rune I need some red wool I need some stone and a right so let's start with my making a blood rune and let's get some Let's get some smooth stone. Um, red wool. Yeah. So, red dye. Do I need a flower for each? I can't remember to make dye. Can I do eight on that or can I not? Let me remember how to dye wool. Vanilla. I can do eight. Wonderful. Right. You'll go back in there. I want three of them. Uh, I want a piece of glass. 
and that's all I need. Uh, is that all I need? That is all I need, yeah. So what we'll do is we'll get that enderman, because I want ender pearls. Hello. We've got four ender pearls off that guy. Amazing. Um, uh, something else I've added that I've not mentioned as you can see by the way I'm gliding about is on my plate there I did the glider glider is quite simple to make so two dark steel and two wings and the wings are three dark steel and some are leather and you add that with, with a few levels to that and uh, turn it on and off with G so I can glide about wonderful Makes things getting around nice and quick. This is what we're making at the minute, though. It's going to get get around even quicker. And what I'm going to do is, so I need two slates. So this is going to, is going to take 1,000 life points off me. I'll prove that in just a moment with the divination sigil. So now, if I look on there, so I've got 25,000 in my orb because we haven't used out the orb. If you click on there, you'll see that's gone down to. 8270 because it's turned it into a tier 2 orb because I forgot about that. Because I'm tier 2 now, if you leave that orbit, that slate in there will become a tier 2, but I don't actually want it to be a tier 2. So it used. You see, when it's turned into a tier 1 slate, it'll stop for a while to let you get it out. But then if you don't get it out, because it's a tier 2 altar now, it'll start turning into a tier 2 slate. So look, it stopped and then bang, it started again. But we don't want a tier 2. So we'll take it out now. And three there, and two there, three there, and our orb in the middle. Okay, so it's a blood rune. And now, what I'll show you here is if I do that with smooth stone and the wool across the top, that doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is because the tier one orb isn't good enough, which is why I've upgraded to tier two. Because you need a tier two orb to make the spell table, tier two orb won't do it, tier two one will. Spell table, wonderful. What you do with this guy is you just place it down somewhere. <coughs> Excuse me, my cough hasn't quite gone. Um, this is my arcane area, but I guess I'm going to have to go in here. So yeah, we place that down like so. And what I need to do now is I need to remember which which paradigm we use on it. What you do now is you put a, you put one of four skulls on there. I think it's. I'm hoping it's the basic skeleton skull I need. I'm asking you to have a quick check. I'll be back in one sec. Okay then, yeah, it's worth checking and it actually is a skeleton skull that I need. Uh, what I'm going to do now then is I'm actually going to put a skeleton skull on top of this spell table here. And now this, I also forgot about this, you need to actually make a second blood altar. So this blood altar is not part of your network, you're not going to use it for putting blood in. I'm not going to use my knife over it or anything. What you do with this is you put a focus and the spell I'm making here, the focus one I want is an ender pearl. So it can be a few things, it can be flint and steel, TNT, um, some other stuff. But the one we want here is an ender pearl. The, what the paradigm does, this bit, is this, this works out what type of spell it is. And a skeleton skull is an offensive range spell. A wither skull is an offensive melee spell. A zombie head is a, I think it's an environmental spell or a defensive spell. And the fourth one is um, a creeper, which is the other one of them too. I think the creeper is the environmental one. So we want an offensive range spell. So we've got that. We've got our ender pearl in there. So it's set to an offensive range ender pearl spell. So that's pretty much what we've got. We need one more thing though for this. We actually need to put in a piece of glass into our altar. There we go. I just filled the altar up while I was while the camera was cutting tired of the inventory. What it's going to do is it's going to turn into a little red ball called uh, an unbound crystal. Now I click that to me. Now I also need to click it onto the spell table. So I'm just going to I put my blood orb. I put my blood orb away by mistake. Well, I put it in there. Okay. So what I need to do now is click that. 
on the spell table. So if you look at it now, you can see it's a crystal of infinite possibilities. The owner is me, and it's bound to these coordinates: 150, 160, 885, which is, yeah. So it's bound to this spell table. So on a multiplayer server, someone could come and change your paradigm or change your thing in there. So you need to be a bit careful with these. If someone comes and changes it, and you try and use a spell, and it's not what you, and something happens that you don't expect it. So then, you might be in a bit of trouble. What I'm going to do, make sure my, my, my glider is on. And what I can do with this guy now, I actually want to show you the first though. Uh, right, that's 9,000. Let's just fill that up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. will get me up, back up to full. I'm going to fill my health up. There we go. So that should be full on there. And it is. Okay. That one's been there. Well, that's not full. Okay, so something's used some power out of that. I say, you can see that's down to 20. So that's using the blood from the altar to fill it back up. So just give me one second. I'll get both these filled back up. There we go then, so my altar is full 10,000, my essence is full at 25,000, and now what I can do with this guy is free, throw it like an enderpearl, boop, then it teleports me. So it's not flight, but it's a quick way of getting around. Now I've used it twice, so let me aim for right over there, you can see the projectile go, and then wherever you land, so it's going to be right back over here, look. So it's there we go, and then let's see how much we used. So our altar's got eight and a half thousand in it. So it's used one and a half thousand. So it looks it looks like five hundred LP. So it's limited, but five hundred LP. I've got quite a lot of range in me. So I can use that to get around now, which is pretty cool. So that until I get full flight is going to be my let's not call it flight mode, but it's going to be that compared with a glider. I can um. I'll end up on a tree. There we go. Up on the tree, and now I can jump off and just uh, glide down. Wonderful. Wee! Right, I'm gonna get back to the base, and then we are going to upgrade this dark steel armor into the empowered versions of it. This glider is really nice. Uh, if you press Shift, you drop. There we go. Back at my base, and there's a zombie up there, so I can get to sleep. So never mind. Right then. Lots of stuff here. Lots of expensive looking stuff. Let's go through it a bit at a time. Um, yeah, in fact, let's leave it in there. Go through it a bit of a time. First of all, to upgrade this armor, we need, as you can see when you mouse over it, and press shift, we need a vibrant crystal plus 20 levels. So we need loads of levels for this. We need some vibrant crystals. To make a vibrant crystal, you make these nuggets. Thrown, thrown an emerald with nuggets. Now, if you remember the, I'm going to actually show that bit. That's made by the energetic alloy and an ender pearl. So it's cost me four ender pearls, four emeralds. So it's, it's quite expensive stuff, but we can make four of them, guys. And I, I'll just take 20 levels to start with, and I'll do the rest off camera. If we come down here now, in an anvil, with 20 levels. I can now take off my helmet and put it in there with a vibrant crystal and then BAM that is now a empowered helmet so you can see it has got a capacity of 10,000 RF power in there and it says look 75% damage absorbed by power so now instead of my armor taking the damage it's the the RF is going to be taking a lot of the damage and it also says diamond level protection when powered so I've actually upgraded the power on this as well which is pretty cool as you can see further down empowered 2 basic capacitor plus 10 levels which is why I have um, let's turn the glider off the zombies are really attracted to the uh, NPC guy that's why they keep getting oh, that's the wrong blade The zombies are attracted to the NPC guys, so I keep getting loads of zombies at my base now. But 
I keep dropping me free emeralds, so I don't want to put him in a safari net. Hmm? He looked they're not even after me, they're waiting for him. That guy. And quickly sleep. And boom. Boom, boom. There we go. So you can see that it's now powered. We've not got any power in it though, which is another thing I need to make. But you see when you look at that it says the next empowerment is a basic capacitor. Well the next three empowerments are a basic capacitor, then a double layered, then an octadic, which is what we've got here. We've got all the stuff to make. So we've got the five basic ones, so I've got four and one for my sword. I need to do another vibrant crystal for my sword, I forgot that. And then what we'll do next is we need another 15, 30 I mean, of these. And we're going to make 15 of these guys, double layer capacitors. So in total you need 35 basic ones. I guess it's 15 of them. I apologise for the TPS lag, but I'm still using this crafting table. There we go. And I'm going to put 5 to one side. And now what we can do with these 10, you can compound them with this stuff I've got ready here. And that gets us 5 of the octatic ones. So what I've got here, once I make one more vibrant crystal, is enough to empower all Fobbits my armour and my sword. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to eat loads of these XP berries. I'm going to get all of them added to my armor and then I'm going to power it up. Right, the other bit we need is to actually power it up. And then for that, what we need is this stuff here. So we need another we need an Enderman outside as well. We need another vibrant crystal for this. And then, along with a vibrant crystal, we need a machine chassis, which is just like that, with a basic capacitor in. We need four electrical steel, two silicon, if you, which if you remember is just sand for the sag mill, and another octadic, which is why I ain't got a vibe. I've used something for that, I'm thinking, yeah. And there we go, that gets us this guy called a wireless charger. And what I can do with that, I think I can just bang it on top of there. And that'll be drawing power from that guy. And that is powering up my armor. Check that out. Awesome. Let me throw a bit more coal in there. This, I'm going to have to start thinking about power very soon. I've been a bit slow, if I'm being honest. And what, what I need to be focusing on once I've got this armor sorted and once I've been to the end, because I want to get to the end, just so I've got a proper supply of Enderman instead of having to rely. So I'm going to rely on um, night time stuff. What can I hear out here then? The baby zombie. I can hear an Enderman. Where are you, Enderman? What if he's in my basement? Well, I can hear him somewhere. So, anyway, that lets you charge. So, I'll charge things up with that. Uh, okay, that's all in a million RF, so that's going to take a while, isn't it? So, that's wireless charger. You can see by the tooltip there at the top, the, um, the info is going to be pulling power from that for a while while it fills up. So, there we go. I'm going to make all the other stuff I need. And when I come back, these will all be empowered for. And uh, we'll see what that does for us. Okay then, I'm back and I am fully upgraded on both the sword and the gear now, so we'll see what this, how strong this stuff is. Now, um, I've given that a sound locator, which if I press L, you should see the sound of my animals up there. So the little, little sounds to show you which direction something's coming from, which is, I guess, pretty cool for finding stuff under underground. The Everything else we already had on that, didn't we? Night vision revealing yet. On the chest there, we already had the glider, so now it's just a diamond level protection when powered. The leggings, speed 3, so 
a portion of swiftness and 10 levels gets you speed 1, another portion and 15 levels gets you speed 2, and a third portion and 20 levels gets you speed 3. It's still not as quite as fast as the Sojourner's Belt though, so I'm going to stay wearing the Sojourner's Belt. But um, it's still worth, it was worth doing if I wanted to have the full full upgrade anyway, so I wanted to see what it was like. And the boots, first of all you see there in white, 4 damage negated when they've got power. So I no longer take 4 damage, which is nice. Jump 3 is the same, 3 pistons. 10, 15, and 20 levels, respectively, get you each level of jump. And flippers let you, let you swim fast underwater. And uh, finally, the sword. I can't say that because the aspects are in the way, but um, Enderman can't teleport once hit, and an extra plus two damage when powered. And I've got an anvil upgrade left on that, travel ender crystal plus 30 levels, which I presume is like a thrown an ender pearl, a bit like what I've um, just made with the blood magic. Ooh, good enough. But the, the triple jump's pretty cool. If I press jump, you can't quite hear it, but it's there's three little, tss, 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 little like jet sounds. So I get a triple jump, one, two, three. Which is pretty cool, so I can get quite high with that. And of course, because I've got the glider on as well, I can get quite high and then glide along. So that's pretty cool, I'm quite happy with that. So what I'm going to do now then is, I'm going to jump into the end, then I'm going to wrap up the episode, because fighting the inner dragon... It's probably going to take me some time. I'm fairly confident it's not going to cause me any harm. I've got plenty of regen potions. Uh, I've put most of my stuff away. I've kept a pick in case I spawn inside a wall. But, uh, most of my stuff I've put out of the way into my chest. I don't need no egg gloomy. So I've got my bag. I've got my unborn crystal so I can teleport around if I need to. And uh, here we go. So earlier when I went and found the, the end portal over there, I took some Mistcraft books with me. And I, I've got one here in the nether that takes me to the ender portal because I can't have one in the overworld because it needs to be intro linking, which you need to have a link modifier for. So, so just know for now that Mistcraft books, you can only go in the same dimension. But because we've gone to the nether, I can now use a book to get back to the overworld. And this overworld book is set to the end portal. And there it is. And this is just, uh, that just goes out into the portal. You can see I've got a little thing over there, 30 metres away I've got the way up, which is just a hole I dug down, and then there's some chests around here I've not found yet, I, I, I took a library apart, that was uh, down there through there and left I think there's a library, I took all the books out of, I've got a zombie coming at me, hello, Oops. I can't get up anyway, I thought he could get up, silly boy, That's just some stuff I left in the chest earlier when I was uh, full from mining and stuff. Oh, and the library also goes into uh, another man shaft, so I've got a man shaft here as well if I, if I need to mine for resources later on. That's very cool. I should have my final ender eye in there. And that book there just takes me back to the nether. Uh, I put all the ender eyes in apart from the one to activate the portal. And here we go. And I also I had no issue with silverfish this time. I just made sure I came straight in, killed the thing, and then f filled in the lava before I bent to death. Filled it in under there as well after the mess I had a couple of seasons ago. Right, here we go. Let's see where I end up. Okay, so I'm on a portal, which is not on a platform. It's not great, but I've got my teleporty thing. So I can get to the mainland. Wonderful. And uh, what I need to do now then is not look at the Enderman. Let's start I've already looked at the Enderman. Great. Get away. Where is he? So I've already taken two hearts of damage. Which isn't great. Oh, overkill. Look at that. Cool. Um, so now without looking at Enderman, what I need to do is get rid of all these things off the top of the pillars. So I'm going to get along with doing that. It's going to take me a while. One of the reasons why I was here for is because of these guys. The Ender Pearls here, they give the Ender Lily Seeds so I can plant them back in the overworld. Ender Lily Seeds, when you grow an Ender Plant on them, you get a chance to get an extra one. So you will, once you've got one, you'll, you can slowly build up the amount you've got. But I want, I want to get them straight from here. Shit. Dragon attacking me. Um, so the Dragon hits to do a lot of damage, which is good. Looks like another Enderman seeing me, which is bad. So I am going to get on with clearing these pillars, staying out the dragon's way. 
Get off. I've got right in. So, oh, I've got right in his way. Yeah, let's hit my first portion. Pretty low, oh, quite dangerous. This is going to take a while, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to wrap up the episode there. Thank you. Get off the dragon. What are you doing? Pushing me out of the way like that. It's just rude. Uh, thank you as always for watching. I hope it's entertaining. I hope I didn't skip too much blood magic for anyone who's not seen it before. Um, there is, I've gone through it slower in the past, and of course, there is my old mod spotlights, but uh, I think there's better ones out now. If you uh, if you need me to go through that a bit slower, just let me know in the comments, and I'll I'll go through again what I did. Get away, dragon! Oh, just trying to stay out of the way until I've got these down. Right, thank you very much for watching. I'll start the next episode with a dragon kill. I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.